Good evening and welcome to another uh, No Tanks live stream. So um, <clears throat> it's now uh, a week on and we've got some more information about uh, lockdown unlocking. So if you want to join a Facebook group and find out what happened, what's happening, uh, then yeah, you're more than welcome. Tonight I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, there's a new film coming out in 2021, Avatar 2, um, and uh, Kate Winslet uh, holds her breath uh, in it, um, and allegedly she, well not allegedly, it's, it's been reported that she held her breath for over seven minutes in, uh, while making the film. So there's an underwater scene, and she holds her breath for um, uh, just over seven minutes while filming. And I'll come to that a little bit later, how that happens. Um, but it broke a previous record of um, six and a half minutes. Um, I, I, I don't know how they, how they measure these records, but it's a Hollywood record. So... Uh, Tom Cruise uh, had that and it got me thinking um, about what I think of free diving in the movies so I've got together some free diving um, shots scenes um, from some films and I'm just going to talk through them and just give you my my point of view Okay, so without further ado, uh, let's uh, let's go first. Let's go for some. Okay, so the first one is Into the Blue. Now, uh, Into the Blue, it's uh, 2005, starring Paul Walker and Jessica Alba, and uh, it's a film about some guys uh, who. Um, a stylized version of, of treasure hunters and they uh, find some uh, something untoward and the film kind of goes around that it's it's, it's quite I, I quite like it there's some really obvious um, uh, continue errors errors continuity errors so uh, this um, opening scene here you can see they have a play fight underwater clearly wearing uh, mask and fins he loses his watch, and he comes up and asks for his mask and fins, which is quite weird, because um, he's got to go down and find his watch. Um, but why I really like this film is because there's the idea of playing, free diving as, as, as a play kind of exploring, they're obviously been trained to free dive, um, so Jessica and Paul have got proper free diving fins on, uh, Omer Ice and Cressy 3000s or whatever, uh, and they've obviously been taught because they can. They're working well under there. They 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 um, you know they dive quite well, so they just have a play underwater. Uh, yeah, they do interact with the rays a little bit too much. Um, they chase them a little bit she tries to touch on but apart from that but the idea that you can just play and you don't have to have a rope you don't have to have any sort of depth or you know time they don't know where dive computers she randomly loses her mask and fins and so does he and then they kind of gain him again uh, but they also um, find a cave which is obviously close to my heart um, they kind of find a, a secret cave which is brilliant and one of my favorite um, things that can happen on a on a free dive but the main point of the uh, the, the main free diving scene that I'm going to talk about is uh, where they go down um, as a group you can see that they haven't used weight belts before they're up around their armpits uh, the, two, to the two girls and they free dive down to this uh, crashed airplane and it it's a really well shot scene they do fall into the trap of making it one breath hold 
and the whole scene's about four minutes long and they go down not knowing what they're gonna do and then end up going inside and one of the guys gets a knife and, and cuts open the, the drugs and, and it's quite weird to think um, that they yeah, it's it's so it it's possible to do that dive, but highly un, improbable to do it in one in without knowing what you do and just go down. But they do keep coming back to the fact that the lead guy is very relaxed underwater. Is not you know over dramatic, which I really like that kind of feeling. And and yeah, and it's 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 it's, it's a cool scene. Um, so I would suggest. If you can get hold of it or get it for free uh, on Netflix or if, you, if you've got streaming then it's, it's worth a watch. Uh, there's not much free diving in later on and it gets a little bit more unbelievable the underwater scenes. But I really like it because of the, the, say the, the, the idea that you can you know, play while free diving. Next up is uh, Men of Honor. Uh, so this is uh, year 2000 um, starring Robert De Niro and Cuba Gooding Jr. And the scene that, it's a slight twist. It is a free diving scene, it's an apnea, it's a breath hold scene, but it's with a twist. So um, the, the two main characters get their, put their heads in these um, old school hard hat helmets and, um, and have, have a breath hold competition. They fill it up full of water, and, uh, and hold their breath and this is it's not it's kind of believable I really like it I like the idea um, but with a really heavy helmet on it would be quite hard work and they're standing up and if anybody's ever tried doing a breath hold standing up it is really really tough and it's it's kind of believable it's a bit like um, the Radiohead uh, no surprises video where the water kind of goes up <laughs> they don't take a deep breath before the before the breath hold. They're just kind of casually standing there and then go, which is a bit frustrating. And the second thing is the guy with the stopwatch. He could have he could have said one minute, two minutes, but he doesn't. He says two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. And to do a, a four minute breath hold standing up without any preparation, without a uh, you know, it's it's just it doesn't need to be that long. It doesn't make the film any better that it's a four minute breath hold standing up. Oh, you know, in this kind of scenario, the other, the other, re quite disappointing thing, because it's, it's not the main focus of the film. It's just, you know, that they had this, this, this kind of uh, fight off. The other really upsetting thing is he has a nosebleed for no reason. That's it. That's that's he's run. You, you, you have a nosebleed when you've held your breath too long, which is a little bit upsetting because kind of doesn't match. Um, and then you can see at the end of the scene. Stop it! Stop it! They run in and, and, and kind of. I'm not spoiling the film to say that they they're they're both cool, but it's a really nice twist on the idea of a of a free diving um, competition. I'm really sorry about the subtitles there. Uh, it's the only the only the only copy I could find. Um. So, the next uh, thing. Uh, scene I want to talk about is um, from a TV uh, drama. It's a Sky, so it's it's a big budget uh, Sky Atlantic and HBO or something. You know, it's a big budget thing starring Jude Law, uh, 2016, um, called uh, The Young Pope. Now the reason I want to put this one in is because this is actually a real breath hold. It's actually a free dive that Jude Law does on camera. And it's really well done. The reason that he's uh, doing it is because he wants to find peace. He wants to pray, and the only way he can get away from the noise of everybody else is to hold his breath and sit at the bottom of a swimming pool. So they, they've got him to do it. And um, and the actual scenes maybe a minute long or so. And, and Jude himself says it was a 40 second breath hold, but he, he, he kind of brushes it off as, yeah, it's only 40 seconds. But I tell you what, if you're not really into freediving and not particularly trained, a 40 second breath hold on camera is quite tough. Let's have a look at it. So 
it cuts when he's as a kid, he tells his story, and then obviously it's played in slow motion. Okay, but he's relaxed, he's chilled, he wants to be there in that frame of mind. So I really like this. I really like this one. You really get a sense of what freediving was about. And I know loads of freediving films slow their the footage down and it looks more kind of you know romantic and flowy. But they've slowed it down to make it kind of fit the scene. But this is he's he's totally relaxed there. I don't know how they kept him at the bottom of the swimming pool. Um, I'm guessing he's got some sort of weights because he's not that deep. There you go, and he lets a couple of bubbles out to show he's underwater. Finishes his praying. But he's, he's, it's beautiful. And for an A list celebrity to actually do a free dive, a real true free dive without scuba, without anybody else in the water, it's really nice to see. Obviously, there's a safety issue, you know, kind of suggesting that you can free dive on your own. But apart from that, so um, yeah, full marks. Love that one. That one's really good. I'm really happy with that. I made that that, uh, that makes me happy to see that you can. Okay, so we've had uh, uh, the Into the Blue showing how you can have fun, Men of Honor showing how you can have a little bit of a twist on it, and the Young Pope who did actually a free dive. So they, there you go, there's, there's three kind of different kind of versions of. <laughs> now we get to the ridiculous. So, <laughs> so this is Alien Resurrection in 1997, uh, Sigourney Weaver and uh, Winona Ryder. It's the fourth, I think the fourth of the Alien films. And it's just the most ridiculous breath hold. Now, as I said earlier, the, the, the trouble with the Into the Blue is, you, the not the trouble, the one down unbelievable part of the, the breath hold is they just go down and they don't know what to expect. When you to think underwater, when you're doing something underwater, it takes a lot, a lot of oxygen. To think about what you've got to do and then do it, it takes up, you know, 10 times as much oxygen. So these guys uh, held their breath and they're running away or swimming away. I did say running away and I meant running away. You'll see. They're running away, swimming away from the aliens and they're shooting guns at them and it's just crazy. And the actual scene's like super long. Um, so here they are, they're all underwater, they've already been underwater for about 30 seconds and then you know a gun that shoots really slow uh, and but the aliens can move at full speed underwater when they want to. Really bad swimming, like demonstrations of really bad swimming. One of the guys is crawling along the floor and she's just swimming back in boots and breathing out all the time. They always seem to breathe out all the time, kind of wasting their air. But Sigourney Weaver still has got time to have a cool look at a kind of interaction with the alien. Still on the same breath hold. She's still got time to be there. It's crazy. Meanwhile, the other guys um, forcing a door open, which like, you know, that would just zap your O2, then call them through and you think, okay, so it's a little bit unbelievable. But of course, when they get to the surface, there's it's covered. And the panic you would feel if you if you got to the surface of a free dive and you couldn't get out. Of course, Sigourney Weaver, because she's so cool and awesome. She's got time to chill out, look at what the situation is, assess the situation, and then uh, no surprises comes and saves them. Uh, yeah, so she, she breaks through the, the thing. Now, 
and, and, and they kind of all you know, go into the next dramatic place of Alien. But as I say, the, the panic that you would feel if you came up, if you'd done a breath hold that you were completely comfortable with and there was something blocking your way and even though you, you knew you had plenty of time, the panic, the instant panic you would feel would just you know, kind of destroy your breath hold. So having done all that running away, and, and I think the scenes, I think the actual breath hold is something like four and a half minutes, or it's allegedly, on, on, the, on the film it's meant to be four and a half minutes, the whole the scene is like four and a half minutes long, it's crazy long. But doing all that work as well, swimming so bad, it's just so unbelievable. Um, so I'm going to uh, spin it out a bit here and uh, we're going to go to a 2010 film that you may or may not have watched uh, called Tangled. Uh, they get caught in a um, in a cave, so again, cave free diving, but they get trapped in there and, and uh, you just saw the, um, the protagonist as it were, the prince, I think he's a prince, he becomes a prince later, uh, diving and he's underwater for about 10 seconds. Um, and it comes up completely out of breath, <gasps> and uh, and then a few seconds later, the air runs out, and they go down. Now, actually, the breath hold time is realistic, and actually, the physics of this kind of could work. I mean, let's, it is an animation. It's not even a real. It's not even real actors, right? It's an anime animation, but they've made it kind of realistic which I really liked so the only issue is obviously as I've said before if you hold your breath and you don't know what you're going to be doing then it's unlikely you're going to be able to do anything kind of you know kind of uh, sensible so uh, they go underwater and her hair lights up I can't remember why the, the magic happens and they follow the current that's pulling the hair And uh, again, doing real hard work on a breath hold just saps your breath hold. Just saps your breath hold. Um, and did I did I do the spoiler? Yeah, I did a bit of a spoiler. Okay, so um, yeah, that's that's kind of nice. It's a realistically length, a realistic length breath hold. It's like you know, thirty seconds long, forty seconds long, which is quite good. Okay, so at the beginning of this video I mentioned Avatar uh, where um, uh, um, she was, uh, what was her name? Kate Winslet was holding her breath for seven and a half minutes. Now she was working with a guy called Kirk Crack who is um, you know, a world-renowned um, freedive coach. Um, I've met him a few times, um, when, especially when I was back in competing, competing days. And um, he is now doing mixed gas freediving, specifically for video shoots. So um, it's not pure oxygen, he mixes it up a little bit, but basically increases the amount of oxygen that people are breathing and you know, before a breath hold. So that's how Kate Winslet's got seven, seven minutes breath hold. Uh, if she could do it on on you know, normal air, then you know she'd be going to the world championships and doing quite well. Um, but he used this. Um, I mean, they've never actually said they've used it in this, but he is a proponent of um, you know mixed gas free diving for this. So this is Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, Mission Impossible Five or Fifteen or something <laughs> um, in two thousand fifteen, and. He did, he did this breath hold and, and apparently it was about six and a half minutes actually holding his breath uh, on set underwater, which is incredible, even if it's you know on, on mixed gas. Um, incidentally, the first first time that um, Kirk Crack came, well, I, I, I knew him, but the first time I saw him on, on, a, on a big budget kind of film thing was uh, um, David Blaine's week underwater. So David Blaine was in a bubble of water for a whole week and then held his breath for a world record. So the world record at you know, in fact, I think it was my my record, I think actually. 
It was Herbert. I was coaching Herbert, I think, actually, maybe. <laughs> anyway, in about nine minutes or so, I think. And he was going to do 17 minutes or something. Crazy. And somebody asked Kirk Crack before the attempt, before the whole... And if you know anything about the David Blaine shows that he did, you know, the, in a block of ice and on a pole in London and and in this bubble of water, they were massive. Like the media attention was massive. And before all this happened, or when in, it was kind of starting to roll, somebody interviewed Kirk. So Kirk Crack, world-renowned free dive instructor, and they said, "How is he doing this breath hold?" You know, if the world record's nine minutes, how is he doing it? it with only a week of training? And Kirk Crack just uh, replied, he's a magician. Which I just thought was the best answer. He kept uh, the free divers, you know, all us free divers go, no, no, it's got to be, you know, can't, it's, it can't be real, can't be real. Uh, but he kept the secret and just said, he's a magician. And it came out afterwards, I mean, came out, it was pretty obvious to, to you know, people who knew what, Talking about that, he was breathing pure oxygen. Uh, he was in this bubble, only head out, pure oxygen, took his breath and went under. It actually ended in near disaster and uh, marched to panic. And I can't remember the, 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 the girl who was helping, but two higher, top, top world champion freedivers were his safety divers. And um, yeah, it, it was, it, it didn't end well. Um, and they hadn't thought about actually how to kind of manhandle him in a in a ball, but anyway, that's all beside the point. Kirk Crack did this film. Um, I believe he did the film with mixed gas with Tom Cruise. Now, some really good things uh, about um, this film is the wetsuit with an oxygen meter built into the arm. I mean, like that's what we all need. We come on, come on. Fourth element. I'm going to speak to. Um, I'm going to speak to Jim at Fourth Element. And say, Jim. Come on, it's been 2015. Mission Impossible came out with an oxygen meter in the wetsuit. I want you to make one. It's also got a countdown timer on the hand, that's three minutes, which is brilliant. I love the fact that they've picked a time which is a sensible breath hold time. Three minutes, I mean, that's that's a good breath hold. Um, it's sensible, it's realistic. Um, I don't know why you'd need an oxygen meter. Just, I mean, like, what, it's just going to tell you you're about to pass out. <laughs> Great, but for the film, it works really well. And 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 a, 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 a countdown type built into his his uh, wetsuit glove. But more than that, the entry into the water has got to be the best free dive entry ever. I just loved it. <laughs> it's the oxygen meter. It's brilliant. <laughs> so you just climb over the gate. And <laughs> and then he goes for a tube ride, so the currents are pulling him through. And um, I mean, obviously, it gets washed around, and it, and then the story is there behind it. And obviously, it's impossible. I mean, the clues in the name. It's Mission Impossible. Okay, um, it's brilliant. I love it. Um, the weird thing is that the actual scene is about seven and a half minutes long, um, and and it really does keep you on on the edge of your on the edge of your toes, on the edge of your toes, <laughs> it keeps you on your toes on the edge of your seat. Um, and he has to do all this crazy stuff underwater, even though his his wetsuit's saying you're running out of oxygen. The most upsetting. And I don't know what he's doing. It, it, the most upsetting, but also the best thing about it, kind of, is he actually passes out like you would, kind of realistically, which is kind of bad. But I think it's important that we show the dangers of free diving realistically. And, and this is, he just blacks out. So no blood, no, no dramaticness. Um, and just kind of drifts off. <sighs> and obviously in the film, um, he dies. Yeah. Because there's no way back from that. Of course he doesn't die, it's Mission Impossible, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil it for you. <laughs> okay, so that's Mission Impossible, that was the old 
alleged world record for the longest breath hold in a in a film. And the last film I'm going to uh, uh, go through is um, a little known film from 1988 by by guy called Luc Besson, um, so uh, Jean-Marc Barr and Jean Reno in the, the Big Blue, uh, or Le Grand Bleu, as it was it was released under that title. And now, so this film, um, my own. Oh, has got so many breath holds in it. It's a free diving film, it's about free diving, it's, it's, um, I met Jacques Mayol actually, so the, the film's about Jacques Mayol and Enzo Mallorca and their, their battle um, and uh, of to be the deepest man in the world and I met Jacques Mayol actually and um, he had mixed feelings about it partly because you know, people kept saying is it true, is it true, is it true and, and he said well you know in the film my dad dies in the early part of the film and in reality my dad you know, wasn't in the sea. He, was, he lived to his, you know, his eighties and is a, a banker in Spain or something. So, you know, it, it there's quite a lot of artistic license there. But there's lots and lots of breath holds, which are dramatic, over -dram dra dramatized, but kind of realistic. And uh, right from the very off. Uh, so the first time you see Enzo, he's rescuing a guy in a, an, under a wreck, and it's just brilliant, 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 like videography and 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 breath hold. And there's a fantastic game you can play where you can try and hold your breath for as long as they do. In 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 every time they hold their breath, you hold your breath. Uh, there's a couple of versions of the films, and some of the scenes are slightly longer in some of the versions, <laughs> which we found out. But that's quite a fun game. But this is. Uh, one of the best free diving or best known free diving um, kind of competition -y films scenes if that makes any sense so he goes how long can you hold your breath longer than you oh, classic classic and how do you when you're a little bit drunk at a party how do you prove who's the best free diver in the world Yep, you crack open a bottle of uh, champagne, wait yourself with a, a flower stand and sit at the bottom of a swimming pool. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. And there's some shots of dolphins. The Jacques Mayol was famous for swimming with dolphins. Um, and interestingly, he was famous for swimming with dolphins. And then in, later in his life, he realized that um, he had been teaching them stuff that wasn't natural and they're teaching them uh, you know, kind of unnatural skills and, and, and stuff. And he really went back and, and tried to, in his later life, after the you know, film was set, really tried to correct some of the things that he'd kind of felt he'd done wrong in um, in his freediving, you know, kind of active freediving career. But there's some lovely shots. Well, lovely, he's hanging on to the, to the dorsal fin of a dolphin, but yeah. In 1988, it was not quite as frowned upon as as it is kind of now. Um, and the sleds that they used were just crazy big sleds. But there's some scenes in it that are really kind of give you the idea of kind of why we free dive really. I mean, I like the, the obviously the, this classic scene. Amazing, amazing piece of um, equipment to get him down there, and then just that that kind of moment when he's hanging on to um, he's hanging on to the human mechanical contraption that gets him underwater, and then kind of wanting to go off into the darkness, into the blue, into the with with an ethereal creature, it's it's amazing. It's amazing, thought provoking scene, um, uh, and I suggest everybody watches it. And I suggest everybody learns all the quotes from it because next time you're um, at an open water situation, 
uh, or meet up with freedivers. It's endless fun to kind of quote um, uh, the big blue. How long can you hold your breath? Longer than you. <laughs> anyway, so that's um, a few films that I thought were interesting, had interesting freediving scenes in them. Uh, some of them are actually meant to be freediving, some of them are just uh, you know, kind of breath hold. But I do, uh, yeah, just that's what I thought. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you all next week uh, at the same time, same place. <laughs>